Arrow Lake doesn't cook, guys, then uh, we're cooked. Wave goodbye to all those great performance gains that we're getting from both companies and we've gotten over the past few years. Because if Intel can't compete, AMD will not compete either. This is the only thing that can save Arrow Lake. We gotta talk about it. First off, I wanna say that what is concerning to me is the 40 core die for Arrow Lake has been canceled. And it's kind of funny. Um, apparently that one had a 667 watt uh, TDP or a PL4, Power Limit 4 which is absolutely insane and kind of hilarious. I don't see how that wouldn't melt your CPU. But hey, it's 40 core, so you gotta boost that power, right? There was supposed to be an eight P core, 32 E core uh, chip, and this chip has been canceled, apparently. And there was also gonna be the, I, the Ultra 7, eight P cores, 24 E cores, and this has also been canceled. So now we're just maintaining the eight plus 16, eight plus 12, and six plus eight, and then the other ones that no one really cares about. Uh, <laughs> no, those other ones are fine, but this is the rumor mill that we aren't getting our the full 40 core version And I'll talk about the significance of that later. Now. I wanted to get into performance numbers We'll start with line cove, which is P core of lunar lake and Intel has revealed that But it's also going to be the P core of arrow lake So line cove will be the P core of arrow lake as well as lunar lake Intel's actually even said this that it has a double digit IPC uplift. Now I'm just gonna count that as 10% IPC uplift because if it's more than that, why don't you just tell me? You know, if you say double digit, I'm just gonna assume that it's the minimum. One thing they said that was kind of cool is the um, clock speed can be tuned in intervals and it makes it a lot more efficient. The front end, the back end, everything is totally different. We reworked from the ground up here on Line Cove. But 10% IPC, that is crazy to me. We're going from Intel 7 to 20 angstrom, maybe even TSMC 3 nanometer. It's not totally clear what they'll be using for the, uh, the P-Core die. Even though they said years ago they were gonna use 20 angstrom, I'm not sure if that's the case anymore. All, it's probably only gonna be a 10% uplift on the P-Cores. All is not lost because we have the SkyMont, or as I like to call them, ChadMont cores. Um, they, we've gone to a three wide decode on Raptor Lake to a nine wide, you know, totally new E-Core from the ground up, but do not fall for this. They're saying it's giving us 70% more performance. So we're getting 70% more performance than Meteor Lake's low power E-Core that was meant to not do any work at all. Mild updates and stuff to hold your battery life in place when your laptop is closed and you are not using it. So 70% more performance than that you know, that is disingenuous on Intel's part. This is what I wanted to talk about. And this is insane to me. So with the Chadmont eCourse, Skymont, whatever you want to call it, we are getting the same IPC as Raptor Lake P cores. Okay? Raptor Lake P cores and Skymont eCores from Lunar Lake or, or Arrow Lake are gonna perform the same when they're clocked at the same speed. If you have a Raptor Lake P core clocked at four gigahertz and a SkyMont E core clocked at four gigahertz in single threaded applications, they will perform the same. Think about that. <laughs> That's a huge increase in the E cores, um, gen over gen. And I mean, it's just amazing. This. This is the only thing that can save Arrow Lake, is the Chadmont course. Okay, here's where we crunch the numbers. Here's where we do the math. A 13900K Cinebench R23 Max OC, this is widely known and accepted that it can reach 40K multi-core score. And in fact, those people that really know what they're doing can reach even higher than this, but I consider a Max OC on the 13900K and Cinebench 40K. I found a channel Bang for Buck Gamer, um, shout out to Bang for Buck Gamer. He made a benchmark with all the E-Cores off. And this guy, I mean, he is a giga chad. He buys like the most expensive builds and it makes him, you know, like he comes out with the best benchmarks. I don't know how he's a Bang for Buck Gamer when he's buying a 4090 and 13900K, but hey, nevertheless, he provided me a benchmark and the 13900K 
Max overclock P cores only got 24,000 in Cinebench R23. So therefore, P cores make up 60% of the performance. 24K of 40K is 60%. And E cores make up 40% of the performance of the 13900K, which is an 8 plus 16 CPU, the same as the high end of Arrow Lake. We will be losing 30% performance, multi core performance, through to hyper threading. So 24K times 0.7 is 17K, but we'll be getting 10% performance on the P core. This is a very uh, conservative estimate. I've gone with conservative estimates here. So Arrow Lake's 8P core should be getting 19K based on this estimate, which is less than Raptor Lake by a good margin. We're getting 30%, even maybe more on the E cores. So 16K times 30, 1.3, that's 21K. So we're getting more performance out of our E cores than the P core at this point. And that's because we have double the amount of E cores. So our total score would be 40K multi-core score or uh, equal to the 13900K. So multi-core would be the exact same. Uh, <laughs> now, I know what you're thinking. Well, what about for gaming? You know, is this gonna have a big impact on gaming, not having hyper-threaded? And my boy Danny's Reviews tested 40 games with his 13900K and he turned hyper-threading off and he found that actually without hyper-threading in gaming, the, the CPU performs a little bit better. I mean, this is honestly due to margin of error, but the 1% lows are actually noticeably better. Um, the ga the average is basically the same. So, hey, that's pretty cool. So maybe all is not lost for our the gaming bros out there. So now for all the Intel fanboys, I know where you are. And I know that you're saying, nah, there's no way going from seven nanometer to 20 angstrom or two nanometer we're only gonna get 10% on the P cores. That is bull crap. You don't know what you're talking about, silicon steak. Okay, I hear you. I'm gonna give the P cores a better estimate of 15% performance. That gives us 19 and a half thousand in Cinebench. And then the E cores, yeah, you're right. They're Chadmont. They can probably go more than 30%. With this one, I kind of give it to you, I agree. They could probably get up to 40% performance. They're gonna clock faster. That's 42K. So now we're only 5% faster with this estimate that's a little bit more favorable for the Intel fanboys. <laughs> oh, oof, man, that, that's, uh, that's not good. <laughs> now I hear those Intel fanboys saying, all the people saying in the comments, hyper-threading ain't nothing. We don't need hyper-threading. Dude, hyper-threading's always been a joke. We, we, never, we don't need all those threads. We just need fast, single thread. Okay, I get what you're saying. I found a Reddit thread where a guy with a 13600K uh, turned off hyper-threading and he only lost 13% performance. He had 25K multi-core, which is exactly what I'm getting. I'm getting a little bit over that with my 13600K, which by the way is more than the 5950X 16 core uh, Zen 3 CPU. So if you find a 13600K for $200, and you want that multi-threaded performance, just go with that. Don't get the 16 core 5950X. It's way worse because the single thread is worse on it, but I digress. What's up boys? My video software totally crapped the bed and my audio and video are not synced up. So I'm gonna finish this last part within my editing software. So hyper-threading ain't nothing, nothing. We only lose 13% multi-core. This comes out to making us break even with Raptor Lake multi-threaded on the P cores. And then 4.65K total, or this is gonna be 16% 16 faster multi-core, which is still from going from seven nanometer to two nanometer is pretty bad and definitely not worth upgrading a platform for. But the 40 core version, Intel could bring that out at any time and smoke AMD. All the Intel fanboys are probably saying that. Well, the 40 core version, I'm not gonna lie, it's, it's pretty giga chad. This is the only way I could see Intel totally just dominating with this generation. We would get double the E-Core performance. That would be 45K. And that plus the 24K of lower hyper-threading that we just estimated would give us 225% more multi-core performance or 90K. That, <laughs> what do you even need to do with that much as a home user? I don't know. 
but you're probably trying to hack NASA or something. I don't know. Um, ultimately though, for gaming, Air Lake Max is gonna be 15, 20% faster. And you know, the way with Zen, how Zen 5's looking, it would win. It would totally win and that would be great. But X3D is coming out when Air Lake's coming out. That's the whole reason AMD's delaying X3D. They're keeping their cards close to their chest. And I think that X3D is gonna be 15, 16% faster than Zen 5 is. So they'll probably be tied, honestly. They're, Arrow Lake and X3D are probably going to be tied in gaming. I could see Arrow Lake having more multi-core performance, especially if they do a refresh with more of these Chadmont cores. So what do you think? Do you, can Arrow Lake compete? Here, later in the video, I was talking about chiplet design, how um, this audio is messed up too. But basically, Arrow Lake's gonna be a chiplet. I don't like chiplets, especially for gaming. They increase latency and lower bandwidth. But the way that Arrow Lake is doing its chiplet is on a silicon interposer uh, through Foveros. And basically it gives you monolithic-like performance while still being a chiplet. And it's very expensive. AMD, they have this primitive technology that is just wires uh, that they connect the chips with. And it's very old school. It's like how your car, how your CPU connects your graphics card. The newer Ryzen chips, I think, use more advanced version of a TSMC packing technology, but yeah, so that's what sets this apart. Meteor Lake had um, Foveros as well, and it did not perform well. The latency was high and the bandwidth was low, and Meteor Lake was a piece of garbage. It was efficient. That was the only thing it had going for it, um, and that's why they only released it in laptop. Will Chadmont save Arrow Lake? Or, and will AMD fanboys tear me apart in the comments in this video? Well, go down and look below and see how they're ripping me a new one right now.